What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash entitled parents. This story's called, Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid Try to Steal USB. I've had a few entitled parent stories before, and it would seem that my town is just very entitled. The roles for this story are, me, entitled kid, USB stealing little crap, teacher, teacher who helped me get it back, Friend 1, the same friend from my first Entitled Parent story. Friend 2, a different friend, this time from the second story. The one who was assumed to be my boyfriend in that story. Yeah, no. Entitled mother! We don't see much of Karen, but when we do see her, oh boy! Principal, the principal. I would call him the head teacher where I'm from, but for the sake of you Americans and others, he is principal. On with the story. I write books and basically I have two USBs. One is the shape of a horse, which you pull apart, then the USB is inside. I keep this one at home as it was quite expensive and holds 53.6 gigabytes, I think. I then have a one gigabyte USB that I take places. It is just a normal USB that I use when I'm at school. I then put all my work onto that, go home, and then put it onto the 53.6 gigabyte USB. This means that my one gigabyte USB, if I lose it, it is only one day's work lost, not five months worth. One day, I'm in the school library, two days ago, and am working on some Photoshop stuff. I was drawing the races for the story. It will be a fantasy one, an entitled kid made an entrance. Wow, what are you drawing? I am very protective over my work and get embarrassed when people talk to me about it, even if they mean well. Oh, uh, just on some sketches. I was pretty much done with them by this point, so decided to try to disengage the conversation. Uh, I have to go now though. I ejected the USB. I learned to do that firsthand a few months back. Is that where you keep all your drawings? Yeah, uh, you interested in drawing yourself? I already do! I draw way better than you. I was uh, kind of irritated, but I thought it could just be a slip of the tongue, so I let him off. Sure, uh, well, see ya. I began to walk away, and then I felt a tug on my sleeve. Why don't you just give me the USB? I'm better, I can make your drawings better. Sorry, uh, no, I need this for what I'm working on. Fine, but I should still get it. You can just buy a new one. Why don't you buy a new one? They aren't much. No, give me yours. I just walk away. I thought that was the last of Entitled Kid, but a few days later, I was called up to the office. When I was called in the principals, I knew there was something wrong. And sitting there, smug grins on their faces were Entitled Mom and Entitled Kid. There she is. Principal, expel her now. Whoa, calm down. We need to hear OP's side of the story. But she took my USB. I knew what was happening, and after being on here for a while, I knew what to do. Sir, this is my USB and I can prove it. Hush! Entitled Mother cut him off. No, she is stealing my son's work! Please, Entitled Mother, calm down. Can I please use your computer? Sure. I do that, as the grins on Entitled Kid and Entitled Mother's face falter. I boot up the computer and plug in the USB. Can I prove it's mine? Go ahead. Entitled Kid, if this is yours, what size is it? How many gigabytes? Uh, 16 gigabytes, he says with confidence. Wrong. It is one gigabyte, and what does it have on it? Drawings. Of what? Um. I can tell you exactly what they are of. They are fantasy races from a book I have been planning to write for the last five months. Is that so? Yes, and I can prove that. Since you can ask me any question about the work on the USB and I can answer. Right. I move away from the computer. What is the race that specializes in stealth archery? I answer. This kind of thing repeats with me answering easily every time. Is that enough proof? Yes, it would see. Entitled Mother cuts him off once again. No, it would not. My son is writing that book and she plagiarized the entire thing. And where is your proof? On that USB. The one he knows nothing about, and I know everything. Yes, you changed everything. Can I go now? Yes. Principal gives me the USB. I'll have you baked into an enchilada. That girl is lying. That is my son's USB. That was uh, the entitled mother spitting and screaming about uh, 
something. Okay, that woman is uh, messed up for multiple reasons. Uh, first being her enabling her son to steal someone else's USB, and um, two, also allowing her son to steal potentially a lot of work that someone has put into something. You know, like, how messed up do you have to be? But they're both jerks, and uh, Principal, good guy, because, you know, he, uh, he did the right thing here. Also, what happened to the teacher and friends one and two? Weren't they part of the cast? Did they, did they not tell the right story? <laughs> this story's called, Entitled Mother Thinks I Can Tutor Her Son Anytime. I've been tutoring kids in math and English for a few years now. The entitled mother in question is a family friend and the parent of my first student. Since they have been my first ones, and the kid is actually pretty smart, they just forget a passage here or there, I've always charged them next to nothing. 10 euros per hour. Apparently, it wasn't enough. She started saying that we had to reschedule my lessons because their precious child had soccer practice. Which was fine by me. I mean, yay, extra free time. The real problem arrived when she started to send me messages to book my lessons for the same day in just a few hours. Then came the bomb. Here's the cast. Entitled mother! The lovely lady. Me. Well, me. And good kid. Note, this pretty much happened all over text. Can you come tutor good kid today at 3 p.m.? I'm sorry, Entitled Mother, but it's almost 2 p.m. You need to tell me in advance if you need lessons. I just told you! You have more than one hour, you can come! One hour isn't exactly a lot. Plus, I really can't leave right now, I'm at university. There's no need to treat me like this, it's not like I don't pay you! The money really isn't the issue here. I need time to understand what good kid has to do, and I've already told you that I'm in class right now. Do you think I'm stupid? I know you go to my university, and you don't have to follow the courses. If you leave right now, you can get here in less than an hour with public transport. We need you for four hours. Good kid has a test tomorrow. I usually do two hours, and I'm losing patience. Okay, I'll try again. You're right. I can leave, and I can get there in time, but I won't. I need to follow this lesson, and you didn't give me enough time to prepare. Plus, I have scheduled tutoring with another kid at 5, so I can't stay with Good Kid for 4 hours. If Good Kid wants, they can try to do some exercises by themselves and send me a message if they get stuck on something. I really can't do anything else. She exploded. She tried to call me 5 times during lesson and I always rejected the call. Stop calling me. I'm in class. Answer me! I'm paying you! Yeah, 10 euros. I'm paying 10,000 to stay here. If you have something to say, just write or wait another hour. Don't you dare bring money into this conversation. I'm paying you way too much for the amount of work you do. We've always been good to you while you were tutoring good kid. I even bought you a gift for your birthday last year. I asked you a favor once since you are always available for us and this is how you treat me? Well, step off. We don't need your help. I'll find a better tutor for good kid. One that knows math. You know what? Fine. You're paying me half the amount I usually charge. You treat me like your own personal tutor. While I'm tutoring, it's a miracle if you offer me a glass of water and you only bought me a gift because I came to an unplanned tutoring on my birthday, all dressed up for my birthday party, and you went out to buy it while I was tutoring good kid. Good luck finding another tutor that accepts my pay and your times. After that, she just wrote some obscenities at me and then stopped writing altogether. I still helped good kid via message that day since I felt bad for him. The only one who lost without doing anything. I heard his exam went okay. Is it over? No! She called my mother. Still, she was a family friend after all, and told her that I had been extremely rude to her without reason. My mother almost killed me before I had time to explain and then apologized profusely. Jump forward a month or so, my grandfather passed away due to a rapid illness and we were devastated. He was loved by the community and Entitled Mother knew him very well since she was always at his and my grandma's house growing up. She said nothing. She didn't even come to the funeral. And she knew about it because her other child is in the same class as my sister. She only wrote something to me the day after the funeral. I kid you not. Hey, I'm sorry for heating up after you overreacted last time I wrote to you. Could you come and tutor good kid today in the evening? I really wanted to go to her house and shout at her for hours. But since I am a good person, 
I just blocked her and never heard from Entitled Mother and Good Kid again. Man, Entitled Parents are always at their most entitled when they want something from you. I mean, I, I guess that's in the name, you know, Entitled, um, but it's just, it's just shocking, you know? They want something, they desperately need something, yet they're a jerk to you about it. They make it feel like they're doing you a favor by you doing something for them. <laughs> Oh, man. And, um, man, that woman's not very, uh, good, not a very good person if she didn't even care that someone's grandfather died and didn't even mention it the day after the funeral. Like, come on, what is wrong with her? This story's called Entitled Parent Makes Me Cry at My First Job. This post is not as dramatic as some of the other ones, but at least it's true. This was five years ago at my first job when I was 18. I worked at a perfume counter at a now defunct department store and it was my third day there. Here's the cast. There's me, entitled parent, nice coworker. So I'm working at the counter, tidying up and gift wrapping the little perfume bottles when entitled parent comes in. Entitled parent doesn't look like a typical Karen. She's brunette and older and has a sleeping baby in one of those baby slings on her chest. Since I'm so preoccupied with my wrapping, I don't notice her. So I assume she got tired of waiting the three seconds it took for me to acknowledge her. Excuse me! Oh, hi, how may I help you? I need to return these now? She plops a bag of stuff on the counter, which contains mostly clothes, not my department, and a perfume bottle. She also has like 10 receipts for all this crap stapled together. Uh, okay ma'am, you want me to return all of this? Um, yes, that's why I brought it up here. Okay, okay, it's just I'm new and only trained in returning perfume right now. I can return the perfume for you, but I think someone in the clothing department would be better suited to help you return the other items. Listen, I'm in a hurry. I've got to get him, points at baby, to an appointment and I don't have time to go to two departments. You'll return all of this for me right now. I have more important things to do than stand here with yo. At this point, I'm taken aback. I have never had someone speak to me like that before in my life. So I try my best to do the returns. I'm supposed to find the item on the receipt, scan it, then scan the item. But I can't find most of the items in her bag on any of her receipts. So I keep checking over and over, trying to find the items while she's glaring at me and telling me to hurry up, which isn't helping my anxiety. Ma'am, I can't seem to find items. I don't think you have the right receipts. What the hell do you mean I don't have the right receipts? Of course I do. Are you stupid or something? Check again. I'm trying to hold back tears at this point. Ma'am, I looked through your receipts a bunch of times. I can't find them. I can't return them. Oh, yes, you can. Just look at my credit card or something. Here. She shoves her card at me. Look it up. Our system doesn't work that way. We're not Target. I can't do that. Are you kidding me? I shouldn't be treated this way. I'm a rewards member. Go get your manager right now. So I run out trying to find the manager, but it's a big store and I can't find her anywhere. I kept getting more and more anxious, so I asked some coworkers if they could help me, but they all told me to get the manager who I couldn't find, which made me more anxious. So I go back to Entitled Parent. What took you so long? Is the manager coming? I'm sorry, ma'am. I can't find the manager. I... Are you freaking kidding me? You didn't even look for the manager, did you? Just because you're too much of an idiot to do my returns doesn't mean I shouldn't get my money back. I want you to return all my items and I want my money back. That's when I broke down and started to cry. Not tears rolling down my cheeks, but full on sobbing. Entitled parent goes white as a sheet. Hearing me cry, the baby on her chest also starts to cry. Why are you treating me like this? I didn't do anything wrong. I'm, I'm having a bad day. And you think that it's okay to take it out on me? I didn't do anything to you. What's wrong with you? Well, it's your fault. <laughs> Thankfully, my coworker from the counter who just got back from lunch saw me and ran right over. Hey, OP, what happened? I was trying to return her stuff, but she didn't have the right receipts, and I tried to find manager, but I couldn't, and then she called me names and yelled at me, and it's not my fault. Coworker tells me to go to the back room, and I stayed there till the end of my shift, trying to stop having a panic attack. I don't know what happened to Entitled Parent. Okay, um, that is horrible. <laughs> wow, um, 
I don't know what I would do if, uh, you know, I made someone cry at work. I mean, I would feel horrible for doing that because that means I was being a big jerk. But like, <laughs> that's just a weird situation. And I feel horrible for this person, the Redditor here. Um, crying at work is not, you know, ideal. I don't think I've ever cried at work, but I can probably tell it's not very comfortable. This story is called a religious nut job entitled parents don't approve of me dating their son. I was attending an anime convention around two years ago, and it was the first time I had gathered the courage to cosplay. Doki Doki Literature Club had been out for maybe a month or two and was super popular. So me and my friends decided to go as the main girls, with me, of course, dressing up as Monica. The whole thing was amazing. Conventions themselves are always fun, but when you're cosplaying, it's a whole new thing. During this time, it wasn't uncommon to have people come up and give all four of us compliments or ask to take pictures with us. It's also important to note that, for whatever reason, that there's protesters at these conventions. There's your usual overbearing religious nut job fun police types, but I have no idea what they actually protest. Anyway, one day we're walking around when this guy, who looks to be about our age, comes up to me and my friends were going out for food and has this conversation with us about our costumes, getting into the game, giving us compliments, etc. He then asked to take some pictures with us, asking for some specific photos. One is where we're all trying to pull at him, and then he wants to take one-on-one -on -one photos with each of us, with me in the background looking angry or spooky. It makes sense if you've seen or played the game. The final picture is of me holding onto his arm with a big smile while he looks terrified. After the photo, we're exchanging Instagram information, and I casually ask if he's there with anyone, and he got super uncomfortable and said he was there with his family. As the day goes on, we're messaging each other over Instagram, and things had started to get pretty flirty. Eventually, he asks me out to dinner at a restaurant near the hotel we're staying at. The date itself was pretty good. It was funny, and we watched a lot of the same shows and could banter back and forth on differences in opinion. A few weeks go by and we're dating at this point. We're over at his place and things are getting pretty hot and heavy on the sofa. Luckily, nothing too raunchy was going on because his parents walk in with groceries out of nowhere. Apparently, he hadn't told them about me because they were all like, Oh, who are you? Although, they didn't seem too upset on what they had walked in on. I'm beyond mortified. But the parents sit down across from us after putting the groceries down and start asking me questions. What's my name? How did we meet? Etc. The both of them seem very excited to meet me eh, at first. I introduce myself and tell the story of how we met and pull up our photo together with me in costume and show it to them. They get these grim looks on their faces like they just found out I'd killed someone and give their son this death glare. At this point, they're asking me to leave and I'm asking if I did something wrong and apologizing if I did. Well, it's just we want someone modest for our son, and we don't see you two being a good match. What? You don't exactly line up with our beliefs, is all. Please leave. We need to talk with our son. I don't understand. You need me to spell it out? He doesn't need some atheist floozy in his life. Mom! Don't you raise your voice to your mother. Walk your little friend out and say goodbye. They argue for another minute or two before my boyfriend walks me out. He gives me a kiss and tells me he's sorry and he'll call me later. When he finally calls back, he explains how his parents help organize those protests at conventions and how they had some weird views like that. He said he fought with them for over an hour about how he was done with their BS and they demanded he never speak to me again. He ended up moving in with me about a month after that. It was kind of soon, but he didn't really have anywhere to go since his parents had given him an ultimatum and apparently his entire family is like that. On the bright side, we're still together, so at least the story has a bit of a happy ending. Man, that's kinda, that's kinda awkward if I'm being honest. <laughs> I don't know, that seems like a, a lame Disney movie in terms of plot. <laughs> I'm not saying the story's bad, I'm just saying like the stakes aren't as huge, you know? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, well, that was a cool story. I liked it. The parents are stupid and, um, they're very controlling and just stupid, but good story. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.